Hi, my name is Mike Parsons. I'll be your instructor in this course and this is your first of 25 videos, uh, approximately 25 videos. It's called Working with Vectors. What the intent of these videos are is to show you the, the basics or sorry, to sort of bring you into what's most important in the units. It's there to direct you and get you moving in the right direction. I would highly suggest that you go through the course material and that you also supplement some of this with Khan Academy videos, that's K-A-H-N videos. So if you take any one of our topics and you go to Khan, you'll be able to find some supplementary materials. I am going to take the tests and quizzes and I'm going to direct them towards what I do in the videos. This is what you have to be able to master to handle those quizzes and tests. Um, with this first section in U1A1, you will have an activity. You will have U1A1, so that's Unit 1, Activity 1, Assignment Number 2. You will be working with some vectors to, to sort of show off what you've learned here. Okay, first thing is going to be Scalar versus Vector. Often when we're doing physics, we don't care about direction. When we don't care about direction, we use the term scalar. So for example, speed is a scalar, energy is a scalar. We never asked how fast the world's fastest person is and what direction they're going. We just care about their speed. We don't care where they're going. Vector is when we're concerned with direction. So an example of a vector is velocity. Now you might think velocity and speed are the same thing. The difference is velocity has a direction attached to it. So for example, if you were to get on an airplane and go somewhere, you not only care about how quickly you're going, but you care about what direction you're moving in. So you might see something like 25 meters per second and you might have 25 degrees south of east. So it is a velocity because it has both a speed and a direction. So the symbol for speed is V. Now the reason we don't use S is because S is seconds. So we just use the V and velocity is that same V but with a vector arrow over it. Vector meaning you're going to have a direction attached to it. Now when we do directions, let's say you were going in this direction here and you've got north, south, east, and west. Um, the first thing you do is you measure the angle that you're closest to. So we're now closest to north. So that might be 15 degrees. I just made that up. I'm not sure. And you look at the two things it's closest to, east and north. So it's 15 degrees east of north. Whatever one it's closest to, you write down second. Whatever one it's second closest to, you write down first, and then you put the word of in there. So this one here might be 10 degrees. It's closest to east. I'll write that last, south of east. Um, this is not what I use when I do this. There's different ways of writing directions down. This is one of them. Okay, so next thing. What is a vector? A vector is a visual of a distance or speed and direction. So if we said um, a person moves 20 meters and they go 20 meters east, the first thing you need is a scale. So my scale is going to be 1 centimeter equals 10 meters. So I've got my ruler here. 
I know it's 20 meters all together, so that's using my scale, that's going to be 2 centimeters. I'm going east, always go um, tail to tip, and the tip is pointing in the direction that you're moving in. Um, I could also do, uh, let's go 30 meters per second, and let's go 10 degrees east of north. So, once again, I need a scale, so I'm going to say one centimeter equals 10 meters per second. So it doesn't matter what we're looking at, whether we're looking at a distance or whether we're looking at a speed. All we need is a scale, so I'm going to need three centimeters here. And I'm going to approximate 10 degrees east of north. So there would be my east. Okay, so basically that just tells you what vectors are and what they do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two choices on working with vectors. So let's say that somebody goes Let's say that somebody goes on a trip. So in step one, what they do is they go 20 meters north. And then let's say that they go um, 30 meters, uh, let's go um, 10 degrees north of east. I got to make up a scale. One centimeter equals 10 meters is going to be my scale. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go up because I'm going north. And now I'm going to go over. So I'm 10 meters north of east. I'm going to go over 30 meters. 10 degrees north of east. Now, what you can do with these vectors is they can be additive. In other words, if you add these two together, you can get your total displacement. Now, I want to talk about distance and displacement. You should have covered this in grade 10. So the distance, sorry, you should have covered this in grade 11. Distance is the total trip. So, the distance is 50 meters. We went 20 meters and then we went 30 meters. Displacement is the shortcut. Okay, so it's the quickest route. So you should be able to draw in the shortcut And because this is to scale, you should be able to measure this. So this is four centimeters. So that's 40 meters because we have one centimeter equals 10 meters. And we should be able to take this angle right here. And let's say that's 35 degrees north of east. This is the easiest way to use vectors, okay? This is additive vectors. There is a second method that you can use here to find your answer. And it takes a little longer to do. It gets you a more precise answer. So what you could do is you could draw this. So I'm going to draw out what I just did. And I'm going to split this up into components. So this method is called components A, B. Some of your assignments might tell you to do both. I say to pick one. 
this first line here, so the first line is in your y component, so you're going to split everything up into x and y, and it is 20 meters. This second one, you want to split into x and y, because it definitely has x and y components to it. Here's how you do your calculation. dx equals cos theta and displacement. So in this case, we said that was 30 meters. So we would be doing cos theta, which is the cos of 10 times the 30 meters. And then that would give us this number here, and then we do the same thing for the y. But that would be sine theta of the displacement. If you give me one second here. I'm not being overly precise in my calculations. Now what I'd add up, do is add up all my y's and all my x's. So my x would be equal to 29.5 meters. My y would be the 20 meters plus the 5.2 and that would be 25.2 meters. Now what I would do is I would draw the triangle. As you can see, this one's taking a lot longer to do, but once again, it is more precise. There's 29.5. There's 25.2. And now, to find my displacement, C would be equal to 29.5 squared plus 25.2 squared, and then you would take the square root of that. And that should find you accurately the displacement. Once again, the vectors, you can have problems, and if you don't measure things precisely, this will give you the actual answer. Now. The other thing you have to do is you have to find this angle right here. So you'd have to use SOHCAHTOA to find that angle so that you would have the direction that you go in. Okay, folks, um, that's everything from the first lecture. You will have two lectures today. Your job now is to go through U1A1. Sorry, I didn't complete all of the calculations there. I'm going to assume you can do that. Um, so you are to complete U1A1, and if you need any extra help, you should go to Khan Academy videos. Contact me if you have any issues.